May market report for Wichita and national trends. I'm going to go over a lot of cool stats and data, nerdy stuff. Uh, before we get into all that, uh, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, share, help the channel, check out some other videos around real estate, around Wichita, around all that fun stuff. Uh, but let's go ahead and just get right into it. And I'm going to share my screen and get right into the data so that I don't talk for 20 minutes on this one, hopefully. I'm trying to keep it to like 10 to 15, hopefully. We'll see. A lot of stuff to go over. Uh, so keeping current matters, this goes over national trends we're seeing around the nation as far as real estate goes to study patterns of the data and the stats and not necessarily the headlines and popular opinion and rumor and hearsay. Um, so what we're seeing is um, seasonally adjusted. We've seen uh, home prices rise about 1% in Q1 to 2023. So we're starting to see things go back up um, on the incline where they were slightly on a decline. Um, for the last the half last half of 2022, as you're seeing here, um, but on all reality, like honestly, is a pretty moderate adjustment, like down two percent on everything. Um, but we're starting to see the majority of markets rising. Basically, what we're getting there, forecasters are updating their reports on everything. Um, but with that, you know, some people think there's inventory problems, foreclosure problems, and there's definitely an inventory problem, but foreclosures, uh, not so much on everything. Um, we are still still very much in a seller's market with about 1.3 month supply locally. And, you know, really, this is just a simple supply and demand concept. One thing you have to take into account, though, for these um, graphs or these stats is, again, this is the whole nation. And this isn't taking into account price point, um, because what I would say largely is that in the lower end price points, you know, you got to look at percentages within your market and what percentage or price point of the market you're working in and operating in. And so like what we consider low end, which is anything below 200,000 in Wichita is a very um, much a seller's market. There's a lot of buyers trying to buy in that price range, not a lot of sellers to um, provide inventory there from 200 to 400,000 though. It's more of this neutral type of market and it's more balanced. And honestly, when you get into high end 400,000 plus, it's very much a buyer's market. So it very much depends on the price point you're looking in um, for what type of market it is. Because you get a little overgeneralized when you look at the entire data from the whole nation or the whole market instead of specializing and individualizing it to the price point in your situation. So knowing how to navigate each piece and price point of the market is where a skilled, experienced agent like myself who's done it before for plenty of clients comes in valuable as opposed to an agent who just got their license or just started in the last two years that doesn't really know how to navigate and do deals in any market, any situation to capitalize and find the best opportunity for you on everything. So keep that in mind when you're looking at markets is what price point and the relativity of each market, depending on the whole situation. So um, I think people get in trouble when they get broad over generalized statements about the market when you got to get it more narrowed in, more specialized, more specific on everything. Generalists get destroyed, specialists get paid and achieve. So that's something to keep in mind whether you're an agent or whether you're a buyer or seller trying to make sense of all this. Um, but you're still going to see a bunch of headlines, which is their job is to get you to react, to engage, to click on their article, not to present the truth and the facts, like what I'm trying to help you come to realize and see based on the data and the stats. Uh, but this can kind of show you there's been over 1 million fewer foreclosures in the last three years. Um, you can see how many, you know, foreclosure filings there are. And you can see what happened back in 08 and 09. People think that's going to happen again. And here's really the truth of why this isn't going to happen again. There's too many creative solutions and marketers like myself and wholesalers and auction companies and everything else where people aren't getting to the foreclosure process. Foreclosure is like the last straw, last resort situation. Banks don't want to do that. Homeowners don't want to do that. And we as marketers, smart marketers, as realtors, agents, wholesalers, investors, are marketing to these properties, to these people to provide solutions and figure things out and solve them before they go to the foreclosure process. So if you're waiting around for a bunch of foreclosures to hit the market and things to get to the market foreclosure-wise, that's another reason why you're not going to see a bunch of foreclosures because we're getting to them before they ever get to that process and working out a solution for the equity or their personal situation to come to a resolution instead of going to foreclosure. Cause nobody wants to go to foreclosure. The seller does not want to go to foreclosure. The government does not want to go to foreclosure. Whoever the lender is, doesn't want to go to foreclosure. The only people that want to go to foreclosure are the buyers who are waiting around and don't know how to get to these properties beforehand 
on everything. So I know that was a big thing of the past, but I don't think that would be a thing of the future because we're getting to homeowners to provide solutions before um, they have to go to that foreclosure route on everything. So that's a little bit of a data trend, but also an insight from an agent and a marketer who goes and finds those properties, provides those solutions ahead of time so we can figure things out on everything. Um, so if you're looking for a whole bunch of foreclosures or you're hearing like headline activity, they're just banking on your fear. That's it. They're just trying to get you to click and engage, but there's no reason to panic um, based on all that. Um, what else we got? Obviously we got the pen, the uh, recession that we are in slash going to be in on everything. Um, but that's also something to um, not freak out about. Honestly, that's really where the opportunity is at, but let's talk about how that could impact um, recession. During a traditional recession, the Fed's usually going to lower mortgage rates. So in some ways, you kind of hope there's a recession. So mortgage rates can go down and you can either refinance your home. People are going to bring their house to market now. Um, you have more flexibility and options to do things um, on everything. So there's more incentives for people to spend money, stimulate the economy. Um, and again, opportunity is really where it's at. Um, there's kind of some things to assess as far as pros and cons of buying during a session. Obviously, the pros, less competition, less people able to buy, lower prices, lower rates, all those things. Cons, a little bit stricter lending requirements. People are going to be a little bit more uh, scrutinizing your personal situation, the real estate deal, all those things. Fewer options, less competition, less priors, lower prices. Some sellers take the home off the market or opt to wait it out, leaving less available inventory. And then obviously the economic uncertainty is how well do you handle your fear and the concern. Um, but honestly, if you're in a strong financial position, this is like the opportunities you wait for to capitalize on, um, on everything. So recession does not mean falling prices. Um, home price drank, changed during the last six recessions. Um, you can see like obviously in 91 and 08, we did have home prices fall. Um, part of 08 is because it was caused by the financial um, housing market and it was because of the housing market, not secondary like this one. If you look at 2001 and the dot-com boom and 2020 from the pandemic, home prices actually rose in both of those situations. Um, so if we do go into a session again, there's these, this is all opportunity. Think about how many people bought a house in 2020, made a ton of money from doing that. So if you can realize markets are not something to be scared of, there's something to navigate and knowing how to strategize and plan that is where a good agent like myself, who isn't just a pushy salesperson trying to just throw you in the house is setting you up for long-term strategic wealth gain and equity gain for making a smart decision that works for your personal needs on everything. So um, that gives you some insight into recession. Does not mean falling prices? In a lot of ways, what it means is falling mortgage rates. So that could help you out if you're concerned about mortgage rates and it can also help some of this inventory come to the market because people don't want to give up their um, low interest rate. And this kind of gives you an idea of like where the current rates at on existing mortgages, you know, nationwide on Q4, ton of people are at 3% to 4%, bunch are under 3%. And then a significant amount at four to five. And then, you know, there's a small amount from five to six. And that's really what is putting such a clamp on everything we're doing right now. But here's the opportunity with this is a lot of Americans are sitting on a tremendous amount of equity. This graph I will show over and over and over because it just shows you how much options people have with cash in their home, with equity in their homes. Um, so 38% own the home free and clear, don't have a mortgage, don't own anything on it, and just have their cash in their house. So that shows you how many options you can do for those people. Those people obviously are foreclosing. 38% of the market is nowhere near a foreclosure situation at all. And honestly, same thing with this other 28%, mortgage homes with greater than 50% equity like you have options to do there. So that means prices have to drop by 50% in order for these people to be underwater to go to foreclosure. Otherwise, there's too many solutions and deals and things that we can work out with all that equity they have in there. But you just have to have a creative, knowledgeable, strategic agent like myself that knows how to navigate and work through those situations and find deals, find solutions for people. It's not just your standard order processing of throwing in a contract and hope it works. Like we got to provide solutions and do deals, like create deals. Um, you know, and those are unique. Those are custom machines. Can't do that. Order taker, bare minimum type of agents can't do that. And then you have about 32% of mortgage homes with less than 50% equity. Now they can still have 20, 30, 40 and be very healthy on everything. So this gives you an idea of like how much equity homeowners have that they can work with. That's not going to lead to a recession and things that, or I'm sorry, lead to a foreclosure 
crisis of a bunch of homes coming to the market that are distressed. You know, in a lot of ways, what good agents, good wholesalers, good marketers have done, like I've said before, is found a way to reach these homeowners before they have to go to that process, um, which in a lot of ways is good for us as agents when you know how to meet the market, provide solutions, and like basically go seize the opportunities there that's not just like readily, easily in front of your face. So talk to me about that. We got resources for you. Um, but that's pretty much where the national trends are at. We could go over other national trends on this, but honestly, it's more helpful to go over the local trends. If you want the report, the report just shoot me a message. I can send it to you. You can get all nerdy and check it all out. Uh, but then on our local trends, so for the Wichita local market, I don't know where I'm at on time, but I'm going to get through this fast. Um, so we only sold 716 units in April, which is down from 983 in 2022. So that means number of sales have fallen by 27%. That doesn't mean prices have fallen. It means just number of sales has fallen. Um, let's see. So average price actually went up 3.7% from April last year to now. Um, so average sale price is 220000 for April. Um, you know, obviously it's May now. We can only report on the previous month um, ahead of time. St. Theona Construction, you know, they were down 30% in number of sales. Home price percent is up 7% on everything. Uh, the average sale price is 435 on a new build. So if you think you're going to get a new build for 200, 300,000, you're silly. Just look at the data, look at the stats. Um, number of active listings is also something to note is at 1,056 units, which is up from 633 homes last year. And that's about 1.3 month supply. So we do have more active listings, but we don't have pending. So that means just because you have a listing on the market and it's not good, what we're seeing is like the good listings are selling fast and the bad ones are just sitting there. So to think that you can just throw anything out there and people are going to buy it is not the case right now. Um, the other thing to really take into account that I'll get to here in a second is price point of type of listing that is selling and navigating your price point of the market. And what, what is the market of your price point is really what I want to get at um, on an individualized, localized, specialized, specific level, not being super general and vague about like the overall picture. Because overall picture doesn't really help you. I can tell it, talk to you about the overall picture, but that doesn't matter as much as your local market, your local neighborhood, the local specifics of what a skilled agent knows how to price the market, negotiate the market and navigate it. And that's really what the value of a good agent like myself does is doesn't give you a bunch of generalized stats. It gives you specific, customized, detailed, unique stats to you in your house, in your situation and provides a custom game plan that gets you the result. Um, so anyway, closed listings down 20%, active listings up 66%, new listings. So this is the thing too, is we haven't been getting more new listings to come to the market. It's down 80% because you got all these people sitting on their rates. You got them all not wanting to give up their two, 3%, 4% rate because rates are at like six and a half percent right now. So that's been a big issue of why people aren't moving. Um, they want to sit on the rate, keep their house as a rental, what have you. But that's a large reason why we're seeing inventory constriction. So if we do have a recession and rates drop, that will actually help everything. One for buyers, but two for listings come to the market. Um, and that's actually um, economic opportunity within real estate when a recession happens. Because honestly, that's when you should be buying is when it's on sale, essentially, when you buy the dip, essentially. So um, anyway, median days on market is six, um, which that's a little bit of a misleading stat because really I look at average days on market, which is 25. That's a large difference from six to 25, one week to four weeks, essentially. Um, so just, and again, that's market wide, you know, you got to look at your specific localized neighborhood. Uh, let's see. It's the next thing to go over. So closed listings, this gives you an idea of we sold more houses in March than we did in April. Usually it follows the trend of like the green and the red bars, as you're seeing from 21 and 22, but 23 is starting to dip again, number of home sales, not home price um, on everything. And so we're seeing a decline, like that's pretty significant to be going down because usually we're counting on March, April, May, things start to ramp up and they're not really ramping up like we thought they were. So if you're an agent trying to make sense of why your business isn't taking off, it's the whole market. It's not just you on everything. So take that into account. Um, here's something else I'd like you to see from closed listings by price range is where the majority of houses are being sold. 
is this 175 to 400,000 range. And so this is um, probably one of the biggest takeaways you can have from studying the market, studying the data and the stats of everything. Um, so average closed listing price is 240. And then average days of market is also 25. You know, like I said, median days of market six, history of active listings, active listings by month. Where's the price range one? So average price of active listing. So there's a ton of people that are putting their house on the market at 350, 360, 370 that aren't selling. And so that's the biggest thing that you got to look at is not just what is selling, what's being listed and didn't isn't selling that didn't sell. So anything from 200,000 below is just flying off the market. Um, as long as it's a good house in good condition, remodeled well, it's those first time home buyers just dying to get their first house, even with the higher interest rates. 200 to 400,000 is more of a balanced market, meaning like there's an even number of buyers and sellers on everything, but there's a ton of these people that bought their first house trying to cash out on that equity to buy their bigger next house that's in the 200 to $400,000 range. But where it gets interesting is above 400,000 because above 400,000, the market is flipped and it is a buyer's market above 400,000 because there might be five listings out there above 400,000 and one buyer. Well, guess who's got the leverage of that supply and demand situation? That buyer who wants to sell, wants to buy that listing. So just because you have a high price point listing and it's worth a lot of money doesn't mean you're the most valuable thing in that situation. You got to look at supply and demand and comparables that come with that. Understand the reality of the situation, not have this arrogant, pompous, ego-based attitude because I got a high price point and my house is worth 500000 or 600000 It's like, yeah, but if you don't have a buyer to come buy it, it doesn't, doesn't matter. Like, so whoever has the buyer in those high end price range is usually the more valuable person that's in a power position to negotiate and navigate what that seller like can and can't do. But a lot of those sellers at that higher price point are usually pretty financially conservative, pretty stable, um, or in a good spot. And they're like, if I don't get what I want, I'll just keep the house. I'll just stay here. So that's, you know, the other reality of the situation. So you kind of got to negotiate and play the game a little bit differently, depending on what price point you're operating in and working in. So um, it's a battle under 200,000 to get a house, 200, 400,000. There's a lot more complex situations going on with buy sell situations there and more of what I call a normal real estate market. But then at $400,000 plus, it's a whole different game of who you're dealing with financially, who you're dealing with um, seller wise, buyer wise. And it's a whole different game and market up at that price point than it is in the mid range and then it is at the low end. So that's something to take into account with. How are we playing which price point that we're we're dealing with um, on everything in the market? So that gives you an idea of everything that's going on with the market. Sales are down, prices are up, and it's tough out there. It's restricted. And you can see we're not having a lot of new listings come up to the active uh, market on everything. Some of that is from off-market deals going on, but not as much as you might think on everything. Um, we don't really have a stat on off market deals because they're off the market. They're not on the MLS. <laughs> they're either doing private sales or they're going to uh, like wholesalers, investors, things like that. And so we can't really track and measure what we isn't reported, what we don't know about. So that's something to take into account is that there's creative solutions that aren't coming to the MLS, aren't going through realtors. It's becoming more commonplace and it throws off the stats and the data of reading what's in the MLS. So that's something to take into account as well. Um, but anyway, I think that concludes everything that we have going on for the stats. Um, hopefully this has helped you to understand how things were really working within the real estate market, uh, both nationally and locally here in Wichita. If you'd like a more customized, individualized, specific plan for you, your house, your neighborhood, all that without a bunch of pushy salesmanship and just service around the data and how to navigate this situation with solutions, Shoot me a message, sign up on my website. There should be some things below. We'll readily get in contact with you. You know, we're very aggressive on our communication, our service, and our help. But if you're not ready for that, just let us know and we can tone it down on everything. Um, and we'll just kind of go from there. But appreciate you watching. Like, comment, subscribe, share. Go check out some of my other videos. And hopefully we'll get to talk to you someday soon. See ya.